Should be good. Yeah, we were. Let's see. my mission back in the mid 90s. Hello, everybody. Uh, a very, very warm welcome to you. My name's Larry Elliott. Uh, I'm the economics editor of the Guardian newspaper in London, and uh, this is the Davos World Economic Forum open forum for members of the public. This has been going for 10 years. This is the 10th anniversary of the forum, and I'm really glad to see this, this, this hall absolutely jam-packed with people. And we're going to have, a, I hope, a, a stimulating discussion tonight about remodelling capitalism. Um, and before I um, introduce the panellists, I'm going to ask you, the audience, to do a bit of par participation. Um, so, two questions for you. Do you think the current model of capitalism is working, yes or no? No! Show of hands, show of hands, put your hands up. Yes, yeah, yes, it's working. Okay, no it isn't. Okay. Uh, so that's a, a quite, quite mixed, but a slight majority in favour of no. Okay, second question. Second question. Can it be fixed? Can, can, the, can the problems be fixed? Hands up for yes. Hands up for no. Okay, right, we'll be coming back to the audience later on for their comments. Let me just introduce the panellists in alphabetical, if not in the order uh, they, are, they are on the stage. I've got here with me Jaffa Hassan, who is the Minister of Planning and International Cooperation of the Kingdom of Jordan. I've got Ed Miliband, the leader of the Opposition Labour Party in London. Navi Pillay, the UN High Commissioner for Human Rights. Stephen Roach, who works for Morgan Stanley, but also is a, uh, a professor at Yale University. Thomas Sedlacek, who is a lecturer at the uh, Charles University in the Czech Republic, a former advisor to, 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 to Vaclav Havel. Uh, and Juan Samavia, who is the Director General of the International Labour Organization. Uh, and we have Maria from the Occupy Zurich movement. Now, what, the way I'm going to the way I'm going to organise this is that the members of the panel are going to have three or four minutes to answer the two questions that I put to you at the start: Is the current model working? And if it isn't working satisfactorily, what can we do to fix it? And I'm going to be quite ruthless uh, with the members of the with members of the panel because I do want to get the audience to be involved. This is an open forum, and when it comes to your participation, I'm going to show. Uh, an equal degree of ruthlessness, because I know these meetings of old, I've been in the audience myself, and people tend to make, stand up and make 10 or 15 minute statements. That is not going to happen either from the platform or from the audience. I will cut the people off if they try and do that. I hope you'll agree that's a fair and democratic way of doing it, because if one person just occupies the entire space, that's not very fair to everybody else. So. I am going to Larry, ask... you're going to have to stop talking now. Okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Stephen. I stand corrected. I'm, I'm, I'm going to ask Maria to open the proceedings with her views about these two questions. Maria, the floor is yours. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to do it in German. You've got all your, um, your phones to understand what I'm saying. Um, yeah, merci für die Einladung auf dieses Panel. Thank you very much for the invitation to this panel. Wir sind hier eingeladen zu diskutieren über die Fehler des Kapitalismus, die Erwartungen der 99 Prozent, über Regierungen, Banken und die Mühen des kleinen Mannes. And uh, caring for the small man. I'm Mariah. I'm the small man, and uh, I represent you. Thanks for being here. I don't uh, need to tell you much about the state of the world: hunger, military power, discrimination, discrimination, exploitation, destroying nature, poverty. Perhaps you already know that we live in an economic situation in which, uh, which produces all these states that we're talking about. I don't need improving the state of the world for sich in Anspruch nimmt. Die WEF Teilnehmenden reden sogar schon seit zehn Jahren darüber, den Zustand der Welt zu verbessern. Aber ich sehe nicht, wo waren die WEF Teilnehmenden in Haiti, Eritrea, in Palästina oder in Afghanistan? Das WEF benutzt eine Rhetorik, eine Imagine-Schiene im Sinne von, ja, wir haben eine Krise und man muss wirklich etwas machen. Schön, dass Sie das 
endlich auch sehen. It's, uh, Aber es nice ist die Krise it, but, und gemacht uh, wird nichts. They say something about the crisis, they do very little about wird nur darüber gesprochen, reality, wie man die Märkte flexibler macht, wie man die Rechte der Arbeiterinnen noch mehr einschränkt, about, uh, wie man die Finanzplätze schützt. Gesprochen wird nicht markets. darüber, wie man die Welt they verbessert, sondern wie man diese Welt noch profitabler machen kann. Es ist eigentlich nicht verwunderlich, weil hier am Wirtschaftsvertreterinnen sprechen, und die Logik der Wirtschaft ist die Profitmaximierung. Die Logik von Firmen und Konzernen ist die Profitmaximierung. Eine Firma wird zwar von Menschen geführt, aber sie ist eine Maschine und die Verbesserung der Welt ist nicht in ihren Handlungsoptionen. Dass sich die selbsternannten globalen Führer hier so dekadent ungestört versammeln, ist pervers. Es ist nicht nur pervers, weil gleichzeitig so viel Elend in der Welt passiert. There is so much uh, horror out es there in the wide perverse. world. It's weil dieses Elend genau von den Leuten, die hier in Davos sind, verursacht wird. Wenn diese Leute sich Global Players nennen, in einer Welt, in der täglich 40.000 Menschen an Hunger sterben, wenn diese Leute über das Kapital verfügen, das alles zu ändern, dann ist es nicht nur unterlassene Hilfestellung, sondern fahrlässige Tötung. It is in fact Aber wir sind hier am Open Forum. But this is das Open Forum, Open Forum ist die Gegenveranstaltung is, uh, für counter, um, Es ist der Versuch, die Kritik zu vereinnahmen und sie zu kontrollieren. Es ist der Versuch, die Rhetorik in Bahnen zu lenken. Es sind Almosen, weil wir auch noch ein bisschen mitreden dürfen. Das Open Forum ist open eigentlich Forum fürs Web, is was der Salat für McDonalds ist. WEF is, Ein Feigenblatt. Is, is what, uh, Kommende Generationen werden sich fragen, wie ein solches Unrechtssystem so lange hingenommen werden konnte. Und sie werden uns sagen, erzählt uns einfach nicht, ihr hättet von nichts gewusst. Because, uh, wir sind hier im Web, wo 0,0001% Entscheidungen zero, treffen, die 7 Milliarden Menschen betreffen. Uh, die 7 Milliarden wurden nicht einbezogen und die 0,001% sind von niemandem legitimiert. Das nennt sich and the Emancipation. Emancipation heißt Selbstbestimmung. Und Selbstbestimmung funktioniert nicht. Und 2600 Personen die Zukunft von 7 Milliarden diskutieren. Unsere Zukunft müssen wir selbst in die Hand nehmen. Es gibt genügend Ansätze dafür, wie Kollektivgesellschaften, selbstverwaltete Betriebe, Genossenschaften. Es gibt eine kollektive Intelligenz. Es gibt eine Vielfalt von Blickwinkeln und Erfahrungen. Noch viel mehr Möglichkeiten, die man ausprobieren und entwickeln kann. Wir leben in einer Zeit, in der all die erkämpften sozialen Errungenschaften in Gefahr sind. Wir leben aber auch in einer Zeit, in der die Menschen in der ganzen Welt aufstehen, genügend durchschauen und beginnen, sich selbst zu organisieren. Liebe Leute, das Web ist nicht die Welt. Die Welt besteht ja nicht aus reichen, weißen Männern. Hört auf, von irgendwelchen Panels zu erwarten, euch das System zu erklären, euch zu erklären, was die Probleme sind und wie man sie löst. Hört auf, euch klein zu machen. Ihr wisst, was Sinn macht und was nicht und wie die Welt sein kann. Und wie euer Leben sein kann. Lasst euch nicht ohnmächtig machen, weil dieses System darauf basiert, dass sich all das nie ändern wird. Das wollen sie uns glauben machen. Aber guckt euch um, nehmt die Dinge in eure Hand, vertraut eurem Verstand und eurem Herzen. Great transformation ist das Thema hier. Great transformation. Totally over in a second. Okay, good, good. Great Transformation ist das Thema hier. Lassen wir uns nicht mehr erzählen, sondern sprechen wir miteinander. Ein erster Schritt der Veränderung ist, dass wir alle eine Stimme haben. Nehmt diese Stimme wahr, weil ihr habt alle etwas Wichtiges zu sagen und beizutragen. Hören wir auf, hier über große Veränderungen zu sprechen, sondern beginnen wir damit jetzt mit einem ersten Schritt hier in diesem Saal. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Okay.
Okay. Well, we're ready to talk. I hope you are. So let's let's get on with it, shall we? Should we use the microphones as well? Uh, I don't know. If there's space for uh, how are we going to organise this? I mean, I'm. I'm I... Look, look. Hang on, 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 hang on. I'm quite happy to organise the meeting, or not, no, not moderate. If someone else wants to moderate, that's cool. <laughs> what do you think? I, 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 think I, I think we should continue from here. No. No. No, no. It's not going to work. We're going to... We're gonna do, we, 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 could sit, we could sit on the end. No, I, I think we're going to... We're gonna, we're, Well, you know, we've got someone from the Occupy movement. Yeah, there's a lady there. <laughs> hang on, hang on one second. Hang on one second. Look, look. Hang on. Can I, can I just have, can I just have people's attention for one second? Yeah, okay. Who would like the meeting to continue in the way that it's supposed to be organised, i.e. with the panellists up here and you listening and participating when you have your chance? Put your hands up. Okay, who would like it to be organised in a different way? Okay, well, the people who want it organised in the way it was supposed to be organised win by a very large majority. That's the democratic choice of this, this meeting. So let's, so, so let's do it. Let's do it that way. And well, in that case, you're being as undemocratic as the people you, you, you profess. Look, we've just taken. Look, we've just taken a vote. It's been the democratic choice of the of the meeting, and that's the way we're going to do it. But this is supposed. This, look, look. This is supposed to be an open forum for the benefit of the people of Davos and the people of, of Switzerland. The people here want it to be organised in this way. We have to respect the views of the majority of the people. Otherwise, that's tyranny. That's not democracy. That's tyranny. <laughs> Okay, stick. We are face to face. We are. This is. Okay. Yeah, Stephen, would you like to? Do you want to make a make a contribution? Look, we want to talk. Hello. Can we talk? Yeah, you, you. We would love to talk to you and engage you, but if, if, you're, if we spend the whole time fighting over who says what to anyone, then we will not have a dialogue. We will not get to the issues. We are extremely sympathetic to a lot of the problems uh, that are gripping countries all over the world, capitalist and non-capitalist. There are big issues. None of us are thrilled with what's happened in the world over the last several years. 
But if all we do is scream and yell with one another over how to talk, we get nothing done. So let's engage each other. No, we're doing that. We're doing that. Elliot, give me the phone. Huh? Do you want to talk? Okay, but you you are being very disruptive, and and most of the people here don't want to hear your disruption. They want to hear the issues. This is not about disruption. It's about substance. Can we do that? I can't hear you. I can't hear you. No, the panel discussion's yeah. about capitalism, the, the, and you were invited to contribute. Huh? Look, look, can I just say something? Can I just say something? Okay, look, we, we, we're already a quarter of an hour into this session. We can sit here for an hour and a half and just yell at each other and get nowhere, and some people can go home feeling very happy that they've disrupted the meeting and they'll feel very good about themselves. But the majority of people here, I think, want to discuss the substantive issues, which is, is something going wrong with the system? If so, what can we do to put it right? I think that's the, that the, the bulk of the people here want to discuss those issues. We've got some good people up here, people who are, who are very sympathetic to, to a lot of what the Occupy movement is talking about, and we can have a really genuinely fruitful discussion where we talk to each other and try and get dialogue going. But if, but if we just uh, have a, a, a meeting which is totally anarchic, where people just yell at each other and don't respect each other, then where is that going to get us? We're, really, I mean, we've got, we've got people, Ed Miliband on my right has made, you know, made re reforming and remodeling capitalism part of his real purpose as opposition leader. We've got, you know, Juan Samabia here, who this week talked about the need to create 600 million jobs in 10 years in a report from the ILO. We've got, we've got people from, from the United Nations, from Jordan. We've got people, Stephen Roach, who's a really, really top-notch economist. We've got Thomas Sedlacek. We've got people here who've got some real expertise. And, you know, we can, we can learn from you, but you can learn some things from them. And that's, that, that's what dialogue and is, is all about. It's talking to people, learning from people. But really, you know, uh, hang, on, hang on one minute, hang on one minute. But, but if, we, if we just interrupt each other and shout each other and, and start with a fixed position that everybody on this panel has somehow you know, uh, starts with bad, you know, with bad intentions, we really are not going to get anywhere. And I, and I suggest that, you know, I will, bring the, I will bring the audience into this discussion as much as I can, but let's listen to the people first on the panel, and then we'll throw it open. I don't see anything wrong with that, and I think the majority of people in this audience want it to go that way. <laughs> okay, Juan. Well. You may not think so because of my white beard, but I've been an activist all my life. And I know how to, dis I know how to disrupt a meeting you don't know how much. <laughs> I, I fought a dictatorship in Chile. I was in exile. I came back before the dictatorship was over. I was in jail. I know what you can do in order to make things not happen, and I know that what we need to do is to make things happen. And this, I think, is what our discussion is about. But let me begin with one thing. I think that we have to think of what are the values that we share. And I think that everybody in this room shares one value, which is the respect for human dignity. And if there is a problem today, is that we've lost respect for the individual and for the person. In terms of markets, we have become human capital. Can you imagine a more debasing way of describing all of us? You know, we are human capitals for the market that has now happened. And I want to talk about my issue, but it is your issue. The essence of the dignity of human dignity has to do with human rights, and now we will talk about that. But there is one element which is common to exactly all of us, and that is the dignity of work. The young people want to make sure that they will have the dignity of work. The people at work 
want to make sure that they have a quality work in which they're respected as workers. And the people who have worked for 30, 35, 40 years, whatever it's going to be, want to make sure that what they gave to society, they can receive back once they have a pension. How is work treated today? Work is a cost of production, and it has to be as low as possible in order to be competitive. The worker is the consumer. You, everybody in this room is looked at as a consumer by the economic model of capitalism today. You are a consumer. And if you're a worker, you, have, you get little paid. So since, since you don't get well paid because productivity goes that way and salaries go this way, you know, you get indebted. And you know that everybody in this room and throughout the world. So what is the key question that we all have to coalesce about? Whatever our style of making our points, I don't have any problem with the sort of things that you're doing. It's not, I know it, it's all right. But whatever the way of doing making our point is, work is at the heart of individual dignity, of the dignity of the human being. We prove ourselves in the type of work that society permits us to have and the opportunities that may or may not be there. Work is at the heart of the stability of the way people want to live together, in a household, in a family, or whatever way people choose to live together. A family without work is a very unhappy family. A household without work is people on the street wondering what they're going to do next day. And we know, because we all live in communities, that a community at work is a community at peace. So if you ask me, remodeling capitalism, I don't particularly like the word capitalism for a very simple reason. I think that our society is much richer, is much better, than simply using the word capitalism to describe what we're all about. How can, we, how can we use the word capitalism to say this is a capitalist society? We are not, and I'm certainly not. So I don't mind whether we remodel it or we don't remodel it. What I want are values, and I don't know how we're going to call them. What I want values that are inserted in all of us and that we believe they're going to fight for those, for those values. And I just want to mention that I believe, and I want to leave it here, Elliot, that I believe that we have to fight for the right to have decent work, and particularly the young. You know, if you don't fight to, you know, to say, look, you adults have prepared the policies, are great, because you've somehow engineered policies that we, when we come to, this, to unemployment, you know, unemployment of the young are two, three, four times higher than that of adults. Great job. If there is unemployment, you make sure that adults have less, have less unemployment than, than young people. These are the sort of things in which we need to do. But in order to change and to really get to these changes, there is one simple thing that is essential. We have to organize. We have to organize. There are a lot of deaf ears there. And there are a lot of people that have the capacity to change things and are not doing it. From, 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 from political parties to business to, to civil society itself, so, so one can say, I don't like it, or you can say, what am I going to do about the fact that I don't like it? And my challenge to you is to organize in whatever space you have in society, whatever it is, make sure that you organize, because the last thing that is going to change this world is to say, I don't like it, to write it maybe, to pronounce it maybe, to talk it when you meet with others, and then to go home and say, what the hell, what a bad world I'm in. Without organization, we're not going to change it because the present structures of representation are not doing it. And we need to move into a world in which voice and participation have a space that they don't have today. And that's what you represent, and that's the reason I want to be here because I've been sitting there for a long time. This happened to be a temporary job that I have. My real job is being a member of civil society and fighting for the things that you're all fighting for. Thank you. Jaffa Hassan, um, one talked there a bit about young people, and young people are obviously very, very important in, 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 in part of the world you come from. You've got a very young population, lots of lots of unemployment. Give us, give us your perspective on, on this. Well, 70% of Jordan is under 30. So that's, that's a significant number. That's, that's most of the country. Uh, and, and if we talk about capitalism and how, how this is considered, I mean, really greed is a, is, a, is a key weakness that we have in the capitalist system. And 
unchecked greed leads to injustice and crisis. And that's, that's key. And that's what we found today in, in, in many of the bubbles that happen around us and lead to crisis and further injustices. It is a question of, of needing to regulate the bad side of capitalism, if you will. Uh, that's on one hand. On the, on the other hand, uh, really, capitalism is a very dynamic system. And it needs to preserve and renew its legitimacy. And this has happened over and over and over again. And, and today, we're in, we're in the process of, of significantly needing to renew that legitimacy. But in order to, to do that and to, to survive today, uh, we need to build a culture of prosperity rather than culture of profit. And I think one of the major issues that we have had in, in new emerging economies, and we've moved fast and we've moved by the book and we've privatized quickly and we've welcomed investments and we've doubled investments more and more and more, and that's very important and that's significant. But the key challenge today and, and throughout the Arab Spring is that people are not seeing it. The great majority, the young, don't feel that their opportunity has been fulfilled. They don't feel that they have really had what they expect and expectations are very high. Uh, expectations are very high and it's becoming harder and harder to fulfill those expectations because the state in many ways had given up to the private sector, given up to, 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 to the uh, market economy to play the role that it used to play because it couldn't afford in many ways to continue in that role. And, and now we discover that actually uh, many of the things that uh, had to be uh, done were, are not there. We discover that to remain competitive, you need to have a far, far better education than you used to 10 years ago or 20 years ago or 30 years ago. And if you don't get that quality education, not just the education, if you don't get that quality, you will not have the edge. And, and if, you're, uh, if, if, if others in society go to private schools and private universities or study abroad and come back with, the, with those skills, you do not stand a chance in 10 or 20 or 30 years to go where they are going. And these are the key problems, these are the key issues that are basically expressed every day in, among the youth in the Arab Spring, and, and it is absolutely important to do them. The dilemma for us as governments is to do the inclusive growth part, to make sure that through efficient social policies we're able to maintain efficient market economies, but these social policies really have to be efficient because we cannot afford to have just social policies. So what one, what one big change would you like to see? What, if, if, you, if, you had, if, you, if you could, if you could change the, 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 the current model in, in, in one way, what would it be? I, I, I think the 70% youth in Jordan have to be equipped to a knowledge-based economy. To do that, it's education. And it's not just quality education. It's education that's fully engaged and built into the sectors into the factories. The faculties have to be into the factories. And uh, uh, majors have to build into sectors that are competitive. Otherwise, uh, youth will not only have its dignity by not finding the opportunity, but will not be even able to uh, have an income. And this is another key problem that, that's really a major issue. OK, thank you. Ed Miliband. Um Well, look, Larry, thank you. First thing. I'll say is it's always difficult when you're in a big historical moment to understand the moment that it represents. And I think the people in this audience have to understand the scale of this historical moment because we are seeing a massive crisis, in my view, of a particular type of capitalism, a type of capitalism based on finance, a type of capitalism which has hugely unjust rewards, and a type of capitalism that has huge concentrations of unregulated private power. So my answer to your first question is the system is not working, uh, and I think this system is in significant crisis. Why do I say that? Because uh, I think that the system has produced uh, effects that not just the people who camped outside St. Paul's Cathedral or here in Zurich or uh, sort of here in Davos or elsewhere, uh, are annoyed about, but that the vast majorities of our population make them think that this system is not working for them. So the first thing to say is the system is not, is not working. Secondly, can it be fixed? I, I think you have to be completely honest about this. It depends what you mean by fixed. Because I think that uh, capitalism is an incredibly creative system. It creates huge amounts of wealth, but it is also an incredibly destructive system and it creates huge injustices. Now, personally, 
uh, I think that we can fix the system or at least make it far, far better than it is. And I think we know what the tools are to make it far better than it is. It is about a progressive tax system. It is about a much fairer distribution of wealth uh, and income. Uh, it is about saying that these big concentrations of private power, particularly those concentrations of private power that are exploiting ordinary people, uh, need to have much greater sense of regulation. Uh, and it is also about a system where finance is not a servant of itself, but is a servant of people uh, and a servant of pr a proper job creation. Let me just say one last thing, because I think this is a significant thing, and, and uh, you know, the beginning of the meeting had people from Occupy obviously unhappy about the nature of the meeting. I think those people shouldn't underestimate the impact they have had on this debate, because I think that they have helped to move this debate and where this debate stands, because I think it has brought into very sharp relief the sense that many, many people have that the system is not working for them, and it has forced the media to take more seriously than it would otherwise have done uh, this agenda. But, and this is a very, very big but, the question for that movement, and the question for all of us who care about this, is can you turn expressions of anger into expressions of action? And I think we have actually a unique, this is go back to my original point, a unique historical moment to do that. And a final thing I'll say, why do I say that? Because people from right and left are having to acknowledge this. You know, here in Davos, not exactly the World Economic Forum, not known for its great sense of humility about capitalism uh, and about itself, is having to say, we too get this agenda. That is very significant, but it is an opportunity that has to be grasped, not an opportunity that should be allowed to slip away, because these historical moments can come and then the moment can slip away and it has to be seized. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Um, <laughs> Navi. Navi Pillay. Well, Maria told you that she's a small man representing you. Let me tell you I'm a big woman representing you. And, and I'm not surprised at all that there was a division in the House on the first question on capitalism because the lines are surely blurred when communist systems are exporting billionaires and capitalist systems are importing food. Um, the global economic food uh, uh, crisis and economic crisis and the occupying Wall Street and street protests during the Arab Spring tells us that the age of economic impunity is over. More and more people are demanding greater accountability on the part of governments and on the part of international institutions and the private sector. Prior to the Arab Spring, financial institutions and development agencies described the economic progress in this region, particularly, for instance, on Tunis. They said, excellent growth. They're providing employment for everyone. They're meeting their MDG goals. Where were they looking? Because that's not what the people on the street were saying. Here's the first Tunisian who set himself alight because he couldn't find a job. So there were all these ills, and this was the assessment that was being made to me, the voices on the streets and the protests vindicates what we have always said, that you have to have a human rights-based approach. People must be the center of economic policies, whatever system you call it. That means delivering on civil and political rights, economic, social, and cultural rights. Where do I get this from? The Universal Declaration imposes a obligation under human rights law on all states as their core responsibilities in governance to ensure freedom from fear and freedom from want. Civil and political rights, economic, social, and cultural rights. And what people are demanding today is delivery of their rights. They are no longer prepared to trust uh, invisible institutions or unaccountable institutions to guarantee their economic well-being. What they are asking for is participation in these processes. 
Now, all these standards that I'm quoting are what the member states created. States, all 193 states created these standards, so they are our standards and they must be implemented. Um, are they not being implemented? How, how, how widespread is, is the acceptance of the, of the actual in the terms of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, how, do, how many countries would you say, well, which, how, how big a part of the world doesn't actually ab apply those? Well, I'm looking at it globally, which is my mandate. Let me quote the uh, statistics given by OECD, the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Develop Development for Europe. They said that this year is the biggest gap between the rich and poor. So I don't see any delivery there on economic rights and well-being for the poor. I support the call for participation by all concerned, and particularly the marginalized, those with less economic status, women, children. Uh, they want to have a say in economic and political matters. And th this is the uh, wake-up call that we are receiving in 2011. And it can be done because businesses must be socially responsible and they must respect human rights. Thank okay. you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Stephen, Stephen look, yeah, you, you, worked in, you worked in Asia for a long time. W would this discussion be somewhat different, you think, if we were holding it in Shanghai rather than in Davos or Mumbai? I think that's a very important point. Uh, Larry, is this working? Yeah, I think it's okay. okay. Um, I'm an economist, and yes, I spent the better part of my career working on Wall Street. While on Wall Street, I was very vocal in warning of periodic bouts of instability, imbalance, and excess. I cannot say that my warnings were heeded or listened to, but it never stopped me from uh, trying to get to the bottom of what I thought was a very unstable combination between financial markets and real economic activity. As an economist, I think it's critical to just point out one obvious fact. The income inequality, which has become the, uh, the standard of the Occupy movement as they've raised their protests all over the world, is global in scope. We in the West do not have a monopoly on rising inequality. Whether we are state-directed or pure market-based, capitalist, non-capitalist, uh, America or China, income inequality is higher than it's ever been uh, in modern times. I would argue that it's less the system and more in the way that we have governed our system. We have, in many cases, let uh, regulators, policymakers, politicians uh, be subjected to ideological capture and that has blinded them from imposing uh, the discipline that a system uh, like ours uh, needs. In the last 20 years, we've let, uh, in an increasingly complex world, interrelated markets driven by high-speed technology, veer out of control. We've let regulation be replaced by self-regulation. In the last 30 years, uh, I've counted them up, you can do the math yourself, we've had a major crisis about once every three years. Uh, and the countries involved in the crises are across the ideological spectrum, from capitalists to non-capitalists, uh, to the United States, to Asia, and now, of course, Europe. The answers have been um, uh, very, very elusive, especially for my profession, uh, the economics profession. Uh, economics owes its origins to the problems of allocating resources in a fair and efficient way that generates increased economic welfare, prosperity, and presumably um, equality. We've lost sight of that. The economics profession has nothing to say about the problems of income inequality. That embarrasses me. As a professional economist, 
I take major exception uh, to a profession that does not hold itself accountable to real-time problems. What needs to be done, I'm not presumptuous enough to sit here and tell you that there are five things that need to be done. I myself um, uh, was very much involved uh, in the United States when I was in college protesting against my own sense of inequity during the, um, you know, the war in Vietnam and social problems that swept America during that period. So I definitely sympathize very much with the frustration uh, and um, the isolation, the disenfranchisement, and especially uh, the high levels of youth unemployment. We can say that education is the answer, and I, I'm, I'm an educator now, and I believe it's the answer, but it's not as easy as that. It's matching skills with opportunities that change at hyperspeed uh, in this world. What I do believe most strongly in, though, is that we need better systems of governance to run our markets, our companies, our economies, our monetary policies, and our fiscal policies. We've dropped the ball, and we're still dropping it today. Uh, I spend a lot of my time talking to central bankers and uh, uh, fiscal authorities around the world. We've got deficits that are shooting up as high as they can go. We've got interest rates set by central banks at zero. They don't know what to do. They come up with new and creative policies. They, they call them quantitative easing. I worry that we, policy is unhinged, and the crises that we've suffered uh, 11 over the last 30 years uh, are an indication of more to come. This is not a stable system. It's a stable – it's a system in need of more disciplined Steve, is that governance. Because, is that because of the um, nature of financial markets globally, do you think? I mean, after the last crisis, for example, after the last big crisis in the 1930s, Roosevelt came in and clamped down on the finance on Wall Street pretty hard. I mean, you know, they, they put – created firewalls between retail banking and investment banking, and, and generally the rhetoric was incredibly strong. I mean, in his inauguration speech, he talked about kicking the money changes out of the temple. I mean, the, you know, his sort of stuff would, would be meat and drink to the today's to protesters today. I mean, Look, I'm not here, did, Larry. You, did, you, did, you, did you detect any, 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 any willingness on the part of policymakers to, to, to take that sort of tough action again, or are we just going to have the financial markets running the show no, their financial markets are sort of uh, very much back on their heels. The, the pendulum power has shifted dramatically away from market makers to um, market uh, those, those who are uh, uh, individuals, uh, 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 citizens who are affected most by the markets. The, the point is that um, – uh, the, the pendulum of regulation swings over long periods of time, so back and forth. And it usually takes an upheaval like this, uh, a crisis like this, uh, to change the, um, the value proposition that governs the way yeah. resources are allocated. And as Ed said, we are living in the middle of that right now. And what we don't know are what the new rules are that will provide a, a, a more equitable uh, and a fair outcome. But we know that we need new rules. We know that self-regulation was not the right answer during a period of complexity, rapid technological change, and markets that were prone to excess. And that's a lesson that we need to learn. Okay, thank you. Thomas, you're going to... I'm Sedlacek. Um, I'm also going to do it in German. You know German? Okay. Yeah. Well, four minutes, yeah. yeah. Four minutes? Four, okay. Four minutes. Can somebody make like this? I, I, will, I will tell you. <laughs> Don't worry about that. I'll tell you when your four minutes are up. <laughs> Whew. Okay. Kleine freestyle. 
Okay. Rede vier This Minuten Zeit. Habe ich mir schon immer vorgestellt, wie ist I've es, always, um, wenn ziemlich viele like Leute einem zuhören, was würde ich sagen? Um, Erstmal bin ich sehr enttäuscht. Ganz ehrlich, wo ist das Problem? Wo ist, wovor habt ihr Angst, problem? euch selber irgendwie zu emanzipieren Or, und nicht einfach diese gewohnte Form von Diskussion einfach so hinzunehmen und selber dazustehen, selber für eure Meinung einzutreten and, uh, und zu hören, was andere Leute zu sagen haben? Wo, wo genau seht ihr die Gefahren? Ist es, ist es einfach nur zu einfach, also viel zu einfach, Leuten zuzuhören, die wahrscheinlich seit Hunderten von Jahren, oder, nein, Entschuldigung, seit äh, 50 Jahren vielleicht ähm, im gleichen System immer und immer wieder äh, die gleiche Schiene fahren, in einem Hamsterrad, äh, drehen, sie würde ich glaube ich ausnehmen, die wahrscheinlich auch, äh, aber der Rest äh, hier, ist für mich ähm, sind Repräsentanten von einem System, das dermaßen gescheitert ist, dass ich von ihnen einfach nichts erwarte. Ich erwarte nicht von jemandem, der mir ein Problem schafft, dass er es mir auch lösen wird. Ich glaube, es war Einstein, der mal gesagt hat, wir sollten nicht dieselbe Art zu denken, pflegen, um Probleme zu lösen, mit denen sie geschaffen wurden. Und genau das macht, äh, macht das Panel hier in meinen Augen. Es werden eigentlich nur Leute it, eingeladen, die nicht wirklich querdenken, aber sieht man wahrscheinlich schon. Really, uh, aber das ist auch nur reine Spekulation. Ähm, aber kommen wir zum wichtigen Punkt. Also, was ich, äh, warum, warum denke ich, dass dieses System gescheitert ist? Es ist gescheitert äh, schon lange, lange, lange zuvor. Ich glaube nicht, dass es erst jetzt absolut gescheitert ist. 2011 war, ein, war eine neue Krise, 2008 die, die letzte. Und ich glaube, sie werden sich immer und immer wieder produzieren, äh, in immer kürzeren Abständen, weil das Einzige, was die Elite schafft bei äh, Krisenbewältigung, ist, neue Krisen vorzubereiten. Es, Maria hat es sehr schön gesagt, 30.000, 40 40.000 Menschen sterben jeden Tag. Ich glaube, ich sage hier lieber, verrecken jeden Tag an Hunger an den direkten Folgen von Hunger und die Leute, die das Kapital dazu äh, haben, um, um, das auch zu, also um, um, um das zu bekämpfen, tun es nicht. Und ich glaube einfach, dass, dass kommende Generationen werden uns anschauen, wie, wie wir heute vielleicht auf große Eltern von uns, die im NS-Regime waren, und, und sagen, was, was, was soll das? Wie, wie konntet ihr, äh, wie konntet ihr das hinnehmen? Wie konntet ihr einfach sagen, ja, ist halt so, sterben halt 40.000 Leute an, an Hunger und nicht, weil es zu wenig Essen gibt. Wir wissen ganz genau, äh, glaube ich, noch besser sagen, wir können mindestens 12 Milliarden Menschen ernähren mit, mit, den, äh, mit dem, was wir heute produzieren. Es ist nicht eine Frage von, von äh, Ressourcen, sondern es ist eine Frage von reinen Zetteln mit einer Zahl drauf. Und viele, viele Leute haben diese Zettel nicht und das ist einfach ein, ein Skandal, den ich, ich persönlich nicht mehr hinnehmen kann. Ich werde weitere, Dis ich werde weitere Panels stören. Ich werde... Ich ich persönlich werde meine, werd meine, meinen Großkindern nicht sagen, du war irgendwie nicht so wichtig. Ähm, ich habe das halt immer gedacht, well, so, uh, passt ja. Ich, ich persönlich habe ja auch nicht so ein Problem. Ich, mein, ich bin in der Schweiz aufgewachsen. Ich bin in Mann. Ich bin schon, are we done yet? Just, no, I was, about, I was about to ask you a question. I asked the other panelists okay. a question. Um, Th thank you very much for your intervention. What, would, what, what one or two things would you do to sort out the problem? I mean, what, 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 no, you've, you've given a sort of description of the problem, and obviously there is a problem. We all agree there's a problem. But I just wonder what you would, what you would, if, if you were, if you had the power, um, you had the, you had, you had, you had the ability to solve things. What, what would be the things that you would do in order to solve the problem? Um, contrary to other people, I, I don't see myself as an expert, and uh, I'm <laughs> totally <wrong. laughs> um, <laughs> No, 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 no. no, 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 no. Ah, tut, mir, tut mir sehr leid. Also ich, I'm sorry. Ich habe natürlich. Ja, Entschuldigung. Sorry, what were you saying? Um, Okay, ich habe ich hab natürlich, äh, natürlich habe ich meine Vorstellung. Ich mein, ganz ehrlich, ich äh, bin seit 24 Jahren auf der Welt und ich mache mir natürlich Gedanken, wie, wie, wie eine, eine Gesellschaft funktionieren könnte, die nicht auf Ausbeutung und Hunger äh, Ihr wollt hören, ihr wollt meine Stimme well, hören? Okay, um, 
Also ich denke, dass äh, well, Kommunismus, der Staatssozialismus ganz klar gescheitert ist. Und, äh, trotzdem glaube ich zum Beispiel, dass die Auflösung von Privateigentum an Produktionsmitteln and, um, ganz klar irgendwie ein unüberweichlicher uh, Schritt the, the ist, den wir irgendwann gehen müssen. Property, und die uh, sicherlich in, in Richtung von Kollektivisierung von Ressourcen, that, uh, weil auf einem endlichen Planeten äh, ein privatisiertes Ressourcensystem zu haben, das noch auf ewigem Wachstum basiert, ist einfach nur Schwachsinn. Und ähm, ich glaube auch, dass wir viel mehr auf Bedarfswirtschaft so gehen müssen, dass wir äh, eine, eine Wirtschaftsform wählen müssen, in dem wir produzieren, für das das wirklich an, an Bedürfnissen existiert und nicht einfach Bedürfnisse schaffen, so wie wir das heute machen. Wir haben einen zyklischen Konsum äh, geschaffen, der es uns erlaubt, die alle drei Monate in den iPhone oder iPhone oder was auch immer zu produzieren, das nicht wirklich besser ist als das von vorher, aber es macht halt einfach in unserer heutigen Wirtschaftslogik macht es Sinn, jeden scheiß drei Monate ein neues iPhone zu kreieren. Und ich glaube, dass wir könnten mit, mit ähm, Produkten, Produkten, wir können Produkte, wir können Kleidung, wir können Dienstleistungen, können wir sehr, sehr gut auf, auf, auf Bedarf ausrichten. Okay. Hang on one second, hang on one second. I think we'll just let the, the, the rest of the panel have a, have a word, if you don't mind. Okay, Ed Milliman, have you got? Hang on a second. You, you'll have your chance to speak. Are you, are you part of the Occupy movement as well? Are you part of? Are you yeah. part? Okay. Well, I think it's only right that the other pe members of the panel have a say as well. So, Ed Milliman, what would what, what would? No, I'll give part of the audience. I'll say, um, I, I said no, 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 I think I think I'd like the, I'd like to go around the panel and ask what they would what they would what specific <laughs> things. I, I asked the question of of, of, yeah. of of the chat from Occupy. It's quite a difficult question because we all. It's always easier to say what the problem is yeah. rather than actually lay out some solutions to it. It might well be, I mean, uh, while I might say it's, it's more collective bargaining. One of, the one of the problems is that you know, workers are not unable to get the full or even the part of the fruits of their labour. I'd, I'd quite like to go round from people to say what they think should be done. I think, we, you know, everybody in this room knows there's a problem. We can talk about income inequality and we can talk about the fact that private sector debt has become public sector debt and the bankers have been bailed out by the taxpayer and so on. But actually, I'd quite like us to, to start moving towards some, some answers rather than some questions. So what, what you know, you want to be Prime yeah, Minister yeah, sure. of the UK. What, what sort of things would you want to do? Uh, I, I'll give you three, let me give you three very, very quick uh, answers to that. But first of all, you've got to do something about the runaway distribution of rewards at the top of our society. Now, how do you do that? I said you need a more progressive tax system. I think that's important. Uh, I think you've got to find different ways in which you can control uh, the, what the top executives get because uh, you know, the issue of the top 1% is massive. I think there are ways you can do that by changing the rules, uh, the rules that apply to boards and who's on boards. One proposal we have, for example, is that every publicly listed company should have a normal employee in the board. Because if you can't look an ordinary employee of your firm in the eye and say, actually, this is a justified salary, then you shouldn't be getting the salary. So it's one very specific thing. Uh, secondly, uh, you clearly have to reform the way that the banking system works so that it properly serves industry. How would I uh, do that? I think you've got to look at some of the models that are already out there, for example, in Germany, where you have part public, part private uh, uh, relationships in the banking system. So it's not, you don't simply leave it to the private banking system. Thirdly, as I indicated at the outset, I think there are, particularly in areas where there isn't proper competition, I think you need much greater regulation. Now, in Britain, that's about the energy companies, the train companies, lots of organisations that have been privatised, but in my view don't have proper regulation. So that's not a transformation, but I think there are three things that could make a difference. Okay. Th Thomas, you're, you're not going to get away with just handing over your, your mic for the entire... We don't want really you here just for, just for, for that. And what, 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 you haven't, we haven't heard from you at all, so what, 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 would you, what would you do? You know, when my iPhone doesn't work, I'm not expected to repair it. I go to the experts. So, you know, I appreciate in this the Occupy Wall Street because you've made this a mainstream topic. And I think it's important. And you are just saying, really, what sociologists, philosophers, critical economists, and uh, anthropologists 
just to pick few, have been saying for years that globalization has its dark sides of the moon. It's not just sunny side up all the time. And it was some sort of a miracle that globalization produced, by and large, at least in our quarters of the world, happy, happy results. And thank God for this wake-up call um, that's happening. But the problem is following. And, uh, okay, let's forget, let's help, not Greece... Not, uh, not Wall Street. Let's help, the, let's help the third world. Who's on the street left again? Who's on the streets of, the, of, 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 of Athens? It's the, uh, the, uh, the Greek left protesting that their income is going to go down 5%. Well, it has to go if somebody other's income, in the short run anyway, is going to go up. Solutions. Okay, obviously there is something terribly wrong with the whole idea of interest rate. I don't have anything against capital. I think we should have private capital. But interest rate is spooky. This is a message that we're hearing from Moses, from Aristotle, from Holy Koran, from Vedas, from, from Sumerian. Uh, don't use interest rate. It enslaves you. It enslaves people. It enslaved Greece. It enslaved Hungary. And if we continue doing what we're doing, it's going to enslave the whole of Europe. It is not China that we should be afraid of, that they will catch up with our growth. It is ourselves. China has nothing to do with Greece. China has nothing to do with Ireland. China has nothing to do with Hungary. China has nothing to do with, uh, with the Japanese uh, problems. So uh, redistribution of wealth happens largely because of interest rates. And you can enslave the world, which is what we have been doing, thanks, uh, thanks to that. So my first point, we don't understand the interest, to, to speak very specifically, yeah, sure. we don't understand what it is interest rate. Clearly, Greece has been getting extremely low levels of interest rate, we now know, because we can't take the, the, the bankruptcy of, of, of Greece because it would collapse, possibly, the whole system. In other words, the whole system was set wrong. If we would have set it again from the benefit of hindsight, we would have much higher interest rates. First conclusion. Second conclusion, it was all a hoax. Interest rate... What you read in the Financial Times every day, it's calculated to the one percentage point of a one percent. This is called a basis point. One hundredth of a hundredth percent. We calculate it exactly wrong. It was all a hoax. It doesn't work. We don't understand it. And we're writing it crazy. This is one thing that we either should understand how it really works, which will take many, many years because we didn't figure it out in 2,300 years yet, or stop using it as excessively. Um, Second point is uh, we need to forget about growth in Europe. We've been selling stability, we've been selling our humanity, and we've been buying growth at the expense of ourselves, our future, and others. We have to sell growth and buy stability. The world has grown by 4% last year as a, as a whole. China has grown, a very poor part of the world. We should be happy for that. India has grown, a very poor, poor part of the world. We should be happy for that. We didn't grow. We don't have to grow. We've been growing for many years. We've already been there. We've been efficient. We have been efficient. We've had low levels of unemployment. We've been there. We've done it. We have the t-shirt. We didn't do anything good with it. We didn't help the world. And we are obviously not fit to meddle with, uh, uh, with that. We should actually be happy with what we have, concentrate on the rest of the world, and deal with unemployment by working less. So the German model, Thursday, there is no, not enough demand for the shoes you're producing. Go home Thursday evening, decrease 20% of your pay. You have to take that pain and spend the weekend with being a hippie. Thank you. Excellent. Okay. Before, before I go on, there's a lady in the audience there who'd like to, like, who's been very patient. I'm going to ask the rest of the panellists in a minute for what... For, do you want to get the mic to this? Is there a mic? A roving mic? It's second row from the front. If you, uh, if you can uh, keep your contribution nice and short, that would be very good. Um, thank you very much. Well, I would like to ask the people who is like, here in the Occupy. You say you want to change the um, capitalism, right? So you want to fix it or you want to like change it completely and what? To going back to a socialism, the socialism that never worked in any part of this world? Because that's why I see you're like totally against it, but for what? I come, I'm, I'm just 18 year, years old girl, but where I come from, 
the socialist not didn't work. I'm from Bolivia. If somebody knows where Bolivia is, it's in Latin America. Okay? Yo sé. Yo sé. And you know, my country, I'm making here my exchange here. And now I can see the reality of my country. I love how um, the um, Swiss um, government is, but here people live in a bubble. Because they don't, they, they, they have no idea what a crisis, a really crisis is. People here say like, there is this problem with the president of the bank, the Swiss president bank, and it was like a big crisis. A big crisis is when dead people bought us and votes for a socialist, for a, um, a, a bad government. And that's why, that's a socialism. Why? Because they are like blind because of they want power. And that's what this socialism bring. I'm, 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 I, I was like listening to the guy there. <laughs> and he said like, yeah, people can like with, to with the capitalism buy like an iPhone every three months because these people work for it. And instead of, I see like every day, like um, protest like back home, like. Yeah, go on, go on, carry on. Uh, I'm not stopping you, go, carry on, finish. Okay. I'm may, just saying, and, get, and may I answer you? Hang on one second. No. Has, I, I, I'll, I'll let her in a minute. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Carry on. Because these people, and instead of working, working for the people that they need, they're like, like making protests and stopping my whole country for that. And that's, that, that's true. That's, that's really true. And I think if we, want, if we want to develop, like unfortunately my country is not the best because we have been managed in a bad way. But when it's well, like the capitalism, like, okay, I'm going to put like this example. In, Cu in Cuba, the Havana, how is it now? They say like a socialism, and now how Cuba is. Can every, everybody, uh, somebody of you have been in Cuba? Like, yeah, and it's a beautiful city. Havana is so beautiful. <laughs> but have you ever, ever, ever seen the suburbs of that city? Yeah. Have you seen how poor that is? You think that's fair? It's not fair. It's not fair at all. Why? Because people it's are so good. blind, and like they want just power, right. and power, and they want just that. Why? You can see, um, Hong Kong is a capitalist city. And how big is that city comparing to Cuba? That's Ex it. Excellent. Thank you very much indeed. Yeah, so uh, uh, hang on a second. Uh, uh, yeah. could, could you just okay. br briefly re reply? I mean, I, I'd quite like your views on what you think should be done. I mean, we're trying to get the panelists to say what the solution should be, and so uh, um, you, you, might wanna I you might, might want to. I'd like to talk about the solution too. Okay. That's what why I'm up here. Uh, okay, and, I, and, and it's the same thing I want to say to answer her. Do you want to do it in German or in English? In German. In German. Okay. Can you keep it nice, and, nice and short though, please? Yes, because, of course. Because we are, we, we're, we're, we're already nice. we're, we're, we're running out of time, so. <laughs> um, Ich glaube, dass ich würde einen anderen Denkansatz vorschlagen, um über Lösungsansätze zu sprechen. Jetzt werden Systeme genannt, es wird das Sozialismus genannt, es wird, wie kann man den Kapitalismus organisieren, es wird über, über Systeme gesprochen und ich verstehe nicht, warum wir ein fertiges System uns aufzwingen lassen müssen. Ich würde den Denkansatz vorschlagen, dass wir miteinander uns überlegen, was wollen wir eigentlich. Wir brauchen eine Wirtschaft, wir müssen uns ernähren, wir brauchen Wärme, Menschen in Bolivien brauchen auch. Auch wärme, wie, people in Bolivia need heat and food. How can, can this be done fairly? How can it be organized? How can we organize our ourselves? Ich glaube nicht, dass wir schon zu weit sind, dass wir darauf eine Antwort haben. Aber ich glaube, dass wir dabei sind zu merken, dass es Menschen gibt, die mitreden möchten, die bisher nicht mitgeredet haben. Das heißt, das war die Message der Arab Spring. To be zusammen heard. mit Menschen, die These, einfach uh, arbeiten, mit Menschen, die einfach leben hier, es spielt keine Rolle, wie das politische who, uh, Bewusstsein ist, auch dass man sich überlegt, was sind ich eigentlich in meinem Leben leanings, und sich so organisiert want, und miteinander spricht. Okay. Okay, thank you very much indeed for that. Um, <laughs> let's start, Stephen, and come round, Stephen. Okay, what, solutions. Uh, what, how, how, how I would just, solutions. I would, I would offer just two simple things. Again, you know, I'm I'm the dumb economist, so I'm going to say things that uh, really bear on my area of expertise. I just want to pick up on one thing that Thomas said. 
um, growth versus stability. Stability. Um, we we cut too many cor corners going for growth, for the sake of growth, and we ended up creating in many economies, uh, in the developed world as well as in the developing world. Uh, periods of false prosperity that have come back to haunt us. So I think if we actually uh, introduced stability mandates into the way in which uh, fiscal and monetary and regulatory policies were set, uh, we could build better safeguards into our system. We do not do that now, and there's been enormous pushback from the power structure to even uh, talk explicitly about uh, the concept of stability. So I would endorse that point. I think it's critically uh, important. Secondly, it's been observed, and it's, it's, it's glaringly obvious all over the world, that one of the most serious problems um, uh, is soaring levels of youth unemployment. And this needs to be addressed. We don't know the causes of it. It, it, it could be a number of, of things. But we do know that solutions come uh, in education uh, and in programs that directly uh, employ uh, the, and the unemployed youth, uh, the future of, of, of all of our economies. How do we afford it? Uh, I don't have any answers, but I would say uh, that we could um, uh, give serious contemplation uh, to unwinding the excesses, especially in the United States, that we spend on military spending and divert that to supporting the unemployed youth of our world. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Jafar. I, I, I'm, I'm going to ask Jafar and, 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 uh, and Navi to, to, to make a couple of brief points. I know there's some people in the audience, and I'm going to get to you as soon as I can, but I'd just like to have the panelists' views on what they would do, and then I'm going to throw it open. Well, we cannot ration reward, but we definitely have a responsibility to provide opportunity. Um, and, 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 and that's where the real problem is. Uh, today, we're working on a quality of life index for different parts of, of Jordan. And the results will come out. And I'm sure there will be very, very big differences in different areas when it pertains to quality of life. And that's, that's where government should really intervene. Uh, it, the financial situation, and maybe for Europe, maybe for the US, all the regulations were very important. But the problems that led to the Arab Spring were there far, far before that. And fixing the financial situation is not going to fix the problems that the Arab Spring is about. Uh, if you had seen the Human Development Index that was done on the Arab world over the past seven, eight years, it was a, a red flag all throughout. Uh, but nobody did much about it, or, or the efforts done were not enough. Um, so, so really, it's, it's in the handbook, but uh, right now we're just hearing the voices that were due to the failures of proper management and proper implementation. Okay. Thank you very much. Nabi. Well, I have a simple answer. I think governments should listen to the people and listen to their demands. For instance, right now, corporate uh, compensations, military expenditure uh, remain very high, yet countries all over the world have adopted austerity measures cutting down on jobs, on uh, educational opportunities, old age pensions, and all kinds of social benefits. And if you ask the people, they'll have a clear answer on whether that is fair or not fair. And government has an obligation to protect people from the decisions of economic and financial actors that harm the human rights of people. I have been to Bolivia myself. And I have seen the degradation to the environment caused by huge multinational companies that are exploiting the natural resources there. And that's what I mean. You ask the ordinary Bolivians, and they will tell you without hesitation they prefer clean water than these multinationals mining in that country. Um, so that's the bottom line. Um, but so is, far, is, 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 is democracy failing then? Because you know Switzerland's a very democratic country. They have referendums on virtually everything. I mean, you know, the U.S. is a very democratic country. The U.K. is a very democratic country. We vote every five years for our parliament. Is, 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 the, is, is, the, is the democratic process not working in, the, in, in large chunks of the world? Where it's not working is where the stress is on growth, economic growth as the only indicator. Whereas a human rights-based approach 
will tell you that it's not just growth, it has to be equitable development, sustainable development, with the full participation of the people. Okay. Well, just, just a question here, um, because and I don't know the answer, but I, I look at China. China's grown more rapidly than any large economy in, in, in modern history. They've taken more people out of poverty than any modern economy in, in uh, modern history. They have raised per capita incomes tenfold in the last 20 years alone. There are still a lot of poor people uh, in China. But for them, growth, at least in that period of time, did um, improve the welfare of more people in a poor society than we've ever seen. So I, I take your point, but what consider the alternative if China had not grown uh, and stayed in a very unstable and unchaotic and um, poor place as it was in the late 1970s. You're, you, you seem like you're quite suspicious of the no growth approach. I, I, I think growth needs to be based on solid fundamentals. When you get into trouble with growth is when you roll the dice through financial engineering. You create false growth, unstable growth, dangerous growth that ends up then destroying much more uh, than it would have created. I think this is the point that Thomas was trying to make. We both want stable growth, but we're not anti-growth. Okay. Good. There were a couple of people from the audience, and then I'm going to ask some. No, hang on a minute. There are some people from the audience. I know you've come up on stage, and welcome to you. But there are people who have been asking to speak for some time. So I'm going to ask. Ask. The, can you get the mic to the chap with the about five rows back? Nice and short and sharp. Thank if you. you. Can. So hello to everyone. At first, I'd like to say that I'm journalist. So all what I want to do is just ask. Ask questions, no answer, because I believe media okay, should. Get, yeah, just, okay, you can ask the questions. Go okay. on with it. Yeah. So there was a speech about Havana in Cuba. I would like to ask you, okay, there are some punis, but what about the sanctions to Cuba? Imagine. Also, we saw people clapping that we are now in situation we have to stop our economic growth. Actually, we are, not we are not in the situation we can grow. But I would like to ask you, are you ready to feel that the growth will not continue? Because, you know, uh, I'm afraid a lot of people don't know answer. And we have to have a place for experts. That's all. Thank you very much. Uh, there's a, there, I think there was somebody just behind that. Um, uh, I have a question for Mr. Miliband and also Mr. Roach. Um, just on steps to action, um, do you think there needs to be reform in so the electoral finance system? So at the moment, corporations have um, a very heavy influence on who gets elected through campaigning and things like that. Do you think there needs to be more regulation in there so that people can take strong strong positions against companies. And to Mr. Roach about um, the, the recent decision in America, Citizens United, about the ability for these corporations to spend billions of dollars on uh, electoral campaigns, and that's being called free speech. Do you think there needs to be reforms in these areas as well? OK, thank you. Uh, is there anybody else? One more question I take in this, in this round? Is there a Okay, there's somebody right at the back. I can't. Sorry, I, I do apologise. The lights are right. Behind the camera in the red scarf, I think. Someone right at the back. Let's not discriminate against people who are right at the back. <laughs> I'd like to talk to Maria. I was very happy to see someone on the stage who belongs to the Occupy movement. I was very happy to see a, a, a man from the people uh, talk to you. But I'm a little disappointed that they blew their chance. They blew their opportunity. They didn't uh, take the opportunity to... Uh, to to, to show us what their views were. I'm quite uh, happy uh, to change the system. I think it's quite good that we should work together, but I think we should show respect. Whether you're a socialist or a capitalist or a communist, 
working together or a, a changing a system can only start if you respect the other person. And that, I think, is something that I'm missing here. You haven't told us what the solutions are, or practically no solutions, and you want to change the system, but you don't know what to change it for. You want youth to be behind you, but I think the way in which you're disrupting the panel here is not the way of doing it. And that we really can't, you really can't be taken seriously. So if you have an opportunity again to talk to a public of this kind, then please use that opportunity and give us your views respectively and, uh, and also connect and communicate with the people in the panel on the roster. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, okay. Can I, can I ask um, Ed and Stephen to ask, answer the specific question that was put to them, the one about campaign finance? I mean, what, what, what do you think? Yeah, I mean, the, answer to, the answer to the question is yes. I, I think there does need to be campaign finance reform, both in Britain and the United States. I think that would make a difference. I think it's, it's as an observer of what happens in the United States, it seems to me to be a even bigger deal in the US than it is in the UK. The, the scale of campaign contributions and the need to raise uh, finance. Uh, so look, in the British case, we, I would like to move to campaign finance reform. I think you do have to find a way of having some state funding if you're gonna do that. Um, I think just at the moment, getting people to pay money uh, from their taxes to fund political parties is kind of not really uh, on. But I, I think that over time, we do need to move to campaign finance reform. I think I'd be very willing to Excellent. Thank you very much. As a, as a UK taxpayer, it'd be money well spent. Excellent. <laughs> Stephen. Well, I, I would go further. I realize, uh, Ed, that it's very expensive to run a campaign, but tough. You know, you want to run for office, you've got to be able to raise your funds. I would absolutely forbid any form of business from contributing to a political campaign. Campaigns should be about appealing to the votes of the people, not about appealing to the votes of business, and that's where we've gotten into trouble. Okay. Well, you wanted to say something, and then I'm going to ask, ask for the contribution. No, 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 you can, yeah, it's fine. I'll ask you in a second. You, you, I know you wanted to say something. No, I just wanted to, to go in the line of what was said before about that we cannot, have, we cannot continue with growth, but we have to have clear what it is, and I think it's about human and sustainable development, and both, both together. And the reason I'm saying this is that it is the only way to get out of the hook of a growth system in which, as Steve was saying, the type of finance excesses a part of growth, the non-respect on the environment is part of growth, the incredibly, the fact that you have half of the work, world working population is in vulnerable jobs, that's part of growth. So, you know, how can you use the concept of growth that is now you know, being utilized as a success. And then you say 7%, 8%. I understand what, what Steve said, and we can look back and discuss whether it was good or bad. The fact is that the Chinese have decided to change that and to move into much more social justice. But we're talking today and looking towards the future. So no use discussing towards the past. The fact is that unless we change that, and that's where you know, our capacity to think and to work and to produce energy together in order to create the space for this, for the thinking around this to change, uh, it's, it's not going to happen. I mean, one of the things that's become very fashionable recently is the idea of sustainable growth or green growth mm -hmm. or environment. Is, is that just a contradiction in terms, or is there, a, is there an alternative to the traditional just growth at all costs model? Which Absolutely not. No, no contradiction whatsoever. No contradiction whatsoever because, you know, you, you, you define the um, growth comes from investment. I mean, and you define the type of investment the society wants. The problem is, because of some of the things that Steve was saying, in a totally deregulated system in which you have to let the market take all of these decisions, obviously it's not going to happen. But you can create a space in which the regulation is capable of orienting investments to what are good societal objectives. And for that, you need, you know, you need the type of dialogue we have here. Uh, the ILO happens to be a tripartite institution. And in order to move forward, we have to listen to workers, to governments, and also to business. I happen today to believe that there is too much importance given to multinational companies and to large companies who define the policies 
and extremely little to the only ones that are going to create the jobs that the young people around the room are going to be able to have access to in the future, which are the small and middle enterprises. So you, know, you, need, you need a rebalancing. You need the rebalancing between capital and labor. The amount of rebalancings are enormous, but we are only going to get to define them if we can find ways of our societies to think together and to make the political system move in that direction, to make the business system move in that direction, and ourselves to change our own thinking about our consumption patterns, the way we look at what work should be about, etc. So this is what I feel is the essence of the reason of coming together that we create the, the strength, the energy, I was saying, in order for these types of changes to happen. And this is, sorry, this is what I wanted to say okay, now. Okay, excellent. Uh, I'm gonna ask one of you two to, to, to contribute now, either Maria or, or your friend, because we're, 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 rapidly run, we're rapidly running out of time here. And I'm gonna, well, I, what I'm gonna do is ask one of you to say what you'd like to see done. And, and then I'm gonna ask all the panelists what one thing they've, they've picked up from this evening, one, one thing they wanna, they, they, one, one lesson they've learned from it, one, one interesting thing they've learned from it. So we've got about eight minutes left. So if I, if I let both of you speak, we're gonna run out of time. So what I, and when I go around the panel again, I'll ask you for your one thing that you wanna take away from this meeting. So one of you, one of you must choose who you wanna. Yeah, I'd like to answer the question that, um the girl behind us. Are you going to speak in German? Um, okay, yeah. Um, yeah, also, ich möchte gerne darauf okay. antworten. I'd like to answer that. Du hast irgendwie von Respekt because gesprochen. Because you talked about respect. Störung, respect and uh, für mich if we disrupt and there's no respect, hier oben respect sitzen, doesn't um mean sitting up here and, and talking to you from here respect and telling you what the solutions are. Respect means doing exactly, talking to you, talking to each other, thinking together about what the solutions could be. Das ist eigentlich die ganze... Von, that is basically von, von the Occupy. idea of the Occupy movement. Partei, we're not a political party. Ideen, we're not telling you this is our ideas and you can follow our ideas or you can follow other ideas. The aim of Occupy is to empower you to think for yourself, to come up with your own solutions and to act for yourselves. So the criticism that we're not proposing solutions, well, we're so used to people telling us what the solutions are. Ah, so that's not the idea that we have. The solution is not to sit up here and to tell you what the solutions are. What we need to do is to change the whole process of finding solutions. What we need to do is to sit down and decide what is good for all of us together. Can I just uh, add a okay. Quick okay. Uh, thank, thank you very much, Maria. I, mean, I think the, one of the one, what we are trying to do is is, is have a respectful dialogue, listen to each other and, and, and push the process forward. So I would say that we are actually trying to do that. That's the whole point of this, this meeting is, is, to, is to try and actually together find some, yeah, find some solutions. Through. I'll take that one question that we've, uh, and is, can you bring the mic to this chap at the front here? And then, we'll, and then I'm gonna have to start rounding things off, I think. Thank you. Um, I mean, I was listening to, um, to what you said and, and I think the major issue that we have today is that we, we are, I mean, we have a problem with uh, economics and we have a problem with uh, an, a, a specific system that we call market economy. And uh, of course, I mean, some people would say, okay, let's, let's switch to socialism, let's switch to plan economy, maybe this will be the solution. But I think that if we want to stick the way, I mean, to the system that we have now, because, I mean, to some degree we enjoy it, we have a decent life, but we've, if we want to somehow fix it, we have to think about the limits of economics. And that's what I'm missing today in the political discussion. We are not, we always uh, think about where is the next, I mean, where is the solution within our theory that, or our system that we, with, that we support, uh, the capitalist economy or the market economy, what is the solution? And we sort of, we, we, f we fail completely when we have to address the other question, which, which are the limits? Where it, doesn't it perform as we want? And I think that's the limit where it, it, the politics in its, uh, in its essence comes to bear, in the sense that, I mean, politics in a way that we want to have human rights, we have some rights, and this has to be at a one priority and not just having a highly efficient Market and it, 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 I mean, isn't, this, isn't the process really one of trial and error that you try something if it doesn't work you 
try and amend it or do something differently. If the system, at the mo if, if the way we're doing things at the moment, call it yeah. a system, it isn't the, isn't the point. You say, well, actually, we're not happy with this. It's not working. It, it, if you look at a business, if if, it's, if something's not selling, they change the product range or they do something mm -hmm. differently. That's surely that's the same. The same dynamic applies to politics. If something is not working, you try and analyze the problem, you think of what the solution could be, and you change because otherwise, the, that, the that, 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 that is the only way you're going to do it, isn't it? You, of course, but I think that then we remain in in a in, in a systemic as in, a, in in thinking in this system, and we just keep running in that system. So I think the the, the major point is has to be where I mean just to understand it better, we, because apparently we don't understand it. Yeah, well, we, we don't yeah. understand. And uh, my last point is okay, that quick, 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 very quick, is that what we see in economics is that they suddenly um, they um, they they discover that. I mean, there is behavioral finance. They discover sociology. They discover philosophy. They discover all the other subjects that you can study, which were, uh, which were existing all the time, but just... Well, that's a good thing, surely, that's, that's isn't a, it? That's fascinating. That's, that's, <laughs> it took a long time. <laughs> they took a long time, but that's a good thing. Okay, right. Well done. Okay, thank you. Uh, right, uh, we've got three minutes, and I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven panelists. So I want them to say what they think is... The, the one thing that's come out of this evening, one thing they want to take away, the, or the one thing they want to change. Let's go round from Stephen all the way round to Juan. Youth unemployment. That's obviously the problem. We can't just complain about it. We've got to convert that into opportunity, and we've got to fund it. There are ways to do it. We waste a lot of funds on things that are antithetical to youth unemployment. Okay, thank you very much. Stefan. Uh, a parallel growth index, look at quality of services, quality of housing, quality of schooling, quality of health, and, and translate growth into a parallel system that you're looking at. Okay, thank you. Navi? Well, we all can articulate what's wrong with the system. Let's use right language to spell out what should be done about the system. Okay. Ed? I want to pick up on this gentleman's point because I actually think that maybe what you were getting at was the limits to markets. No, it's not about the limits to economics, but the limits to markets. And the most important thing I take out of what you say and the most important thing we've got to do is establish that there are limits to markets. Limits to markets in terms of the way we provide healthcare and education and pensions and limits to markets in the way that markets work so they have proper regulation. And what is the answer? What provides the limits to markets is democracy. That is the thing, and that is what has been lost over the last 30 years, and that is what has to be regained. Okay. Thomas? Yeah. I think we're lying here to ourselves using the very tool which is called language, linguistics. We have this uh, thing that we read, the mantra that we repeat, which, we, which means we must grow. Otherwise, shorten it up, we collapse, we cease being Europeans. We need to be bribed by at least 3% of new money so that we don't smash each other's heads. You know, this is what you read in the newspaper. This is not true. We don't, we must, we don't must, we don't have to grow. What it means, the sentence, we must grow, it simply means we want to be richer. That's the only thing it means. And that's the problem. We want to be richer. We are filthy rich already. So... So, uh, if you want the others, anyway, I already said that. So, okay, uh, so here we are trying to look for capitalism with a human face. I come from a communist country. We tried to do this communist perestroika to find communism with human face. It failed. Let's hope that the system that relies on innovation will be ready to innovate itself and that we will be able to find soul for this body that got out of control. Because when you separate the body from the soul, from the intent, from the heart, you get a zombie. Ec yeah. Thomas? So we need to return the soul into the economics so we don't need the government to repair it. We don't need the NGOs to repair it. It would be wonderful if we could actually incorporate the values within the prices itself. Okay. So let's hope for, cap for capitalism with human face. Okay. Uh, sorry, I don't know your name, but please, please speak and be quite good. We're okay. already at time. I would encourage to start talking about the real issues, like being to profit from someone equals having an interest rate, equals having growth, and equals having growing debts. These relations are not so much talked about. It's not so much talked about what money actually is, who is creating money, and who is, well, who is creating money. It's not talked about that. If we talk about capitalism in crisis, we should talk about capitalism itself. We didn't talk about capitalism a lot. We always contrasted two subjects which are very abstract without looking into them. 
We should also look into the concept of work as you may start, started somehow talking about in the, day, in, in the beginning, dignity of work does not mean to be employed. Employed means I work for someone else. We should start working for ourselves, for the things we really want. Okay? That, good, good, that good. Means, one, one phrase. That means all the people in the world would like to contribute to this human race, to this, this planet. They would like to do something. Money is just an old system to m make them able okay. to do something. We could have a whole new debate about money, I think, which would take quite a long time. But one... <clears throat> let, let, me, let, me, let me say that I was extremely enthused by, by this meeting. Uh, and I'll say why right away. But before that, I think that there's one, one concept that emerges from what we've all said, but it's one that's not really very much used today, which is social justice. And the notion of social justice behind any one of the options that we can make, I believe, needs to come back. The reason I'm very happy is that we, we began, you know, a little bit difficult, but we wound up dialoguing. Yeah. And what I want to say is that if we, we, we cannot ever resign dialogue because that is the source of the agreements that we need to find in order to get a better, a better society. And I'm very happy, finally, that you're here, that you've been up here, that you're sitting there, that we're listening to each other, and that consequently we conclude that these are extremely complex issues in which we don't, obviously, any of us have a simple solution, but by listening to this other, but maybe we are today, you know, better informed. I certainly have been happy to listen to all of you and to all of you up here because it enriches me and it enriches all of us up here. So thank you so much that we were able to finalize this in the way it has been happening. Thank you. I, okay, it just, it just leaves me to say thank you very much to all the panellists uh, on, the, on the panel, the people who've come up to, to, to participate as well, and to you, the audience, for being here tonight. I think it's been a really fascinating hour and a half. We've actually had a really good dialogue and come up with some serious suggestions for how we can actually improve the state of the world, and that's what this is all about. Thank you all very much indeed. Have a safe night.